They generate four-man battle content, but they're narrative devices first and foremost, as opposed to the trials and the raids feel much more like encounter-based content that happens to tell a story. This feels like story content that happens to have a battle component. These are the half step between raid content and the single player scenario. Um. All right. Doing good. I appreciate some of you guys running with me. This makes the queue times much, much shorter. I mean, I could have completed open world content while I waited, but this is technically faster by a pretty big margin. Oh my gosh, just watching that fill up. That's such a bummer. Hmm. I don't know what to do after experience, after that runs out. I assume it's still worth doing the highest dungeon, but... I don't know. Yeah. I'm already at four levels for the day, though. The goal was five. I assume that five levels will slowly take longer and longer as I get closer and closer to those being all levels in the... Uh, in Shadowbringers. The nice thing is I have one more round of Wondrous Tales. So that'll be half a level. Um, yeah, that'll be half a level. That's nice. Okay. That'll melt it. Oh my god. Even faster. So, I want to use Barrage on my Bloodletter or Reign of Death, right? Barrages for Refulgence. Uh, which one's Refulgent? Because Refulgent replaces an ability at some point, right? Do I have that yet? So is that my 15 second cooldown ability, or is that my proc ability, my straight shot? I don't remember which one turns into which. It replaces straight shot. Okay. I'd like to start practicing the higher level rotation as much as possible. And there's like a thousand things that trigger that, so it's always kind of available. Because you've got like a whole bunch of stuff. And I have Imperial Arrow too. And that's not good enough. The Stormblood battle music is all too epic to just sit and enjoy, as opposed to Shadowbringers was a lot more... Like, Stormblood felt like a finale. Every single song feels like a finale. Every single one. I think it turned down a little. Um, every single one feels like that. Every single song just feels loud, boomy, extra. And so I don't think it ages as well as, like, Shadowbringers will, where, like, there's a... There's a subtlety to what Soken did that's just very... It's perfect. It's perfect. It's... it's. It literally captures a mood. It enhances the game. Um, Stormblood feels a lot closer to, like, how WoW music is, where, like, yes, WoW music is good, but, like, you could also take WoW music and, like, put it behind an indie game, and it would work. Like, this song here, there's battles in indie games that seem right, as opposed to the Roktika... That doesn't go anywhere but Raktika. You know, the song that plays at the end of the 5.0 story, that's for that moment. That's it. 
That's what it's for. Right. Can we get you to 65? No, we didn't get you to 64. My gosh. Um... All right. Because we don't have Bardems for you yet. I like Bardems. Okay. Cool. So we do them two in a row. This will be 64. Man. So you're getting like half a level on each one. So it's, it's going to be four full runs. And this is going to run me out of rested. I think this one will. Man. When you played WoW, you got you turned it off. Yes. Yes. So I like the music in WoW when I first level to cap. And then I turn it off for the remainder of the expansion. And I don't even remember to turn it on when they add new zones. Don't turn it on for raid night. Don't. Like, that's how I always played WoW. Never turned it off. Like, once it went off, that was it. Um. So. Keep going here. It's a bummer that we have to run this like literally four times in a row. Like that's that's disappointing. Um, just in the amount that it's tuned. But like if you could only run it two times in a row, it's honestly too fast. So four is probably fair, just from like a tuning perspective. I don't know that you're meant to like brute force leveling like this. Like it's why they give you roulettes, right? It's why they give you beast drives. They don't expect you to literally just pick one method and just, just grind it. But I'm so close to the expansion now, that feels like the right answer. Is to just buckle down and just do it. Um, because that's the last of the prep. Inventory's clean. This is all stuff I've gotten today. Um, inventory's clean. I've got a little bit of quest log stuff I could clean up, but it's just really... I think even my quest log's pretty clean. I'm picking up Quirthoff stuff right now. So really only those two. And those are for relics. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't mind running like some Delibrum. That's probably what I should do on Friday. I probably just won't. So I wouldn't mind running some Delibrum. I've got like 20 runs of Delibrum to do. And I've got, so I really need to be running like two or three Deliverums every day. Um, so I need to be leveling five times and running Deliverum like three times a day. That's like my actual remaining to-do list. Everything else is done. So I've got everything to 80 that has a task associated with it. Because like I because like Dancer hit 80 and then I needed to get all 500 gear and I now have a Dancer's done, Dancer's geared. And so as soon as Machinist and Bard hit, I need um I need that Therian scale powder for Bard, but I already have mine for Machinist. That comes from Poetics. I have the 1000 Poetics. So I could literally buy that today. And then I would be done with um The Fizz Range Poetics. I could go grab Monks, I guess. Yeah, DR. I just need to run DR. Over and over to get my Time Worn Artifacts. I need 20 more Time Worn Artifacts. What does it drop each time? Does it drop like 3 now? I may need less. Does it only drop 1? It only drops 1, I need 20 more runs. If it drops more than 1, I don't remember if it was affected by that. How many Time Worn Artifacts does Deliverum drop? If it drops three, I might only need like six. And it'd be fun to go do that. Doesn't matter what job I do it on. 
Any job will do. It's three? Oh, well then I only need to run it seven times. That's fine. So maybe I'll do one a day. So, as soon as I'm done with this, then I'll do... That's great. Then I'll do seven. Seven runs of the living room. And then that's the only other thing I wanted prepped. Everything else, I've either scratched off the list or I... Yeah, I think I'm... I'm happy with the rest of... I'm happy to go into Endwalker, as is minus experience on his ranged. And while I'm at it, I'd like to go ahead and level Monk. Um, just to have a melee done. Oh, I already have that item. Well, I can fix that. Cool. Yeah, so I need three... Three times seven gets me to 21. That's 20. I have five in my bag. And it takes 15 per. Maybe I'm not doing that rat math right. Maybe I need 25. Maybe I need nine runs. It's not that many. How many hours of content? 5.x. So 5.0 is probably pretty easily four hours for just MS... 40 hours for just MSQ. Um... 0.1 through 0.55 is probably pretty easily another 15 to 20. So I, I'd guess 60 personally from my own memory for just MSQ. There are probably people that have cleared it faster than that while paying attention to story. If you're skipping story, it's not that bad. But if you're reading story, I think it's probably 60 hours. 5.3 was long. It was really long. And 5.5 had two parts. 5.5 and 5.55. And so I think either one was not that bad. 5.5 wasn't that long. 5.55 wasn't that long. But to do them back to back would have made it a pretty long day. So if you're just now starting... So if somebody's just now starting Shadowbringers today, right? Last night... They got the quest that said, you have completed Stormblood with the little dialogue. And they logged out, went to bed, they woke up. They would need to play about four hours a day. Now there's some dungeons along the way. There's two trials along the way. In the 5.0 series. So there's going to be some, there's going to be some stuff to do. Um... So it's not just going to be like four hours of just story every day. We got a fair bit of battle content integrated into the story this time around. If you're on a um, if you're on a DPS job and you only uh, play during like off peak hours for your particular server, um, it's not that big of a deal because the trust system is available for all the dungeons. And the trials have been fairly popular. Now, if you can play more than that every day, or you're already in Shadowbringers and you're wondering how much further is left, and you're going to subtract that out, what is exciting is that if you finish all that, there's been a ton of interest in the Sorrows of War Lit content and a ton of interest in the um, Eden content. And so there's two great... So if you're already done with 5.0 and you're just doing 5.1 through 5 and you finish and you don't want to stop playing and take a break, the Sorrows of Orlit and Eden questline were both phenomenal. Um, if I had to pick one of the two for battle content, I would pick Eden. For story content, I would pick Sorrows of Orlit. If you were only going to have time to complete one of them. Um... Sorrows of Orlit is one of the most meaningful side stories that we've been told in the game that I've come across. Um, and it gave a lot of context that is optional, but it's like a spin-off TV show, right? Like, it's a really nice deep dive into characters that you could totally complete MSQ without it and you're fine, but it is really nice. Oh. 
So, I, I thought Sorrows of Relit was phenomenal. Should you s stop doing the end game? I mean, it depends. How many days an hour of the week do you play? Like, if you're like, oh, well, I play two hours on weeknights, and I play like ten hours every weekend, you probably still have time. But you are getting down to the wire. If you want to join us in Endwalker on day one, you're getting down to the wire. This is a ridiculous amount of loot. Alright. You can always go back to the Stormblood in-game stuff. So if you want to catch up story and then you finish everything, you can always go back. Unless you're like literally like mid-Omega and you're trying to do that as like a continuous thought. The nice thing is once you're level 80, you can also like run that stuff unsynced with other people and the Stormblood stuff just falls over. The Heavensward stuff and, and before, you can literally solo it. The Stormblood stuff, that gets a little nastier. Um. All right. This is It's a massive health pool in this crap. It's ridiculous. Okay, so my... I just lost Rested Experience. Um, so we'll see what I get. Now I'm down to 25,000 per kill instead of 31,000. So part of my Rested Experience fell off. It's still reasonable. It's just not as good. Um, not as good as it was. All right. We are getting a ridiculous amount of loot. And what's exciting about this loot is we're finally getting up into, like, the 200s. Which means that for my... Uh, for my decent skill up in the 200s, we're now gaining skill on not only Carpenter and Alchemist, but also starting to gain skill on Blacksmith. So that means any weapon I find... Um, probably helping me out so that's good okay process there we go did decent get changed so we don't have a cap correct this expansion yes no cap you can have them all that's why that's why a lot of those are way behind are you correct in remembering OCP say uh, Ishgard housing would be 6.x and not Endwalker launch? Correct. Likely 6.1, Brendan. We'll be able to visit the district in 6.0. It'll likely be 6.1. And remember, there's a lottery change. We're going to have a lottery system for the uh, housing in addition to the first come, first serve method. So wards are going to be split into lottery wards and first come, first serve wards. Um, so, it will be possible to get a house in Endwalker. That will include existing wards. So, the way the lottery will work is it will say, hey, the house is going to go up for purchase at this time. And prior to that, um, the way it's been explained so far is you will be, you will have the ability to buy a ticket. You'll buy the ticket for the purchase price of the house. So say the house is going for 3 million gil, you'll pay 3 million gil at the sign, and whoever gets it will get the house. Everybody who does not get it will get their money back. So you will need the full purchase price of the house to enter. Um, I think a lot of people have it in their head that they're going to suddenly, like, all the houses are going to be won by, you know, what they deem deserving members of the community. There's still going to be a lot of hurt feelings. Because they're going to go, oh, well, that person won one, and they have two characters. Now each of their characters have a house. Yeah, that's not against terms. That's not against terms. Well, they have one, and they already have a grand company house. Free company house. That's not against terms. So, like, there's, you know, they have one, and they're a sprout. They don't even appreciate it. I've been trying for one for longer. Doesn't affect it. 
So. It does sound like maybe you could buy more than one ticket if you had the money. And then after you won one, it would automatically remove your other ones. But we don't know that for sure. We'll get more details in the live letters between 6.0 and 6.1. Traditionally, there are two live letters between patches. So traditionally, we would get a live letter... Um, two weeks prior to the expansion or to the patch and then one um, a decent ways out from then so I, I would expect us to get a live letter sometime just after New Year's and another one late January that's what I would expect um, Yoshipi has expressed that with 6.0 ending the story he does want to sit down and tell the, talk to the community about what the next 10 years are planned for this game so I don't know if that's additional live letters or if those live letters just run long or if that's done in a new format. Is the traditional patch length from 6.0 to 6.1, does that remain the same as it has previously? 64-64. So, and that's if 6.1 falls in February. It could easily push to March. Could easily push to March. We'll have to see. Um... Go again. It never ends. This will probably be my last dungeon, and I'll go run Deliverum after this. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, this will be my last one, and then uh, I'll go see if I can get a Deliverum in before filming with Brian at 2. Because if I can do one Deliverum every day, um, then I finish all my all my relics are... So where I'm at with relics is... Relics are the purple ones. Um, so where I'm at with relics is crafting relics. I got them all to 500. I'm happy with that. Gathering relics. I, I don't really know how I feel about gathering now that they've announced the changes. We'll find out more on Friday. Um, and then... Uh, so the, all my other relics, I'm just doing the 485s for jobs. So those will stay that way with the exception of white mage, which I did not buy it. I might buy it and just delete it just to have it for the achievement and to have it from the calamity salvager. If I have extra poetics, that's probably where it goes. Um, so the next thing is, so the only thing remaining is tank relics. 535 is the max one. I'm only going to have one 535 relic. Um, my goal is to get the others to 515. Gunbreaker's already at 515. Dark Knight's at 510. Paladin's at 510. So I want to get both those to 515 so that I can run level 70 dungeons on my Sage and Reaper. Um, and that knocks from 515 to 535. That should get me easily from like level 70 to 73 on both. 74 on both. Just completing that many dungeons. Um, so that's my plan, is to just push through all the 70 dungeons. Uh, looking forward to doing Savage over Christmas. I, I honestly am not looking to be, like, on the front end of the curve. So for me, I'll be able to do it at my own convenience. But yeah, Savage will likely release December 21st, that Tuesday. So that means the World First race will be in a race to see whether or not they can finish before Christmas. Um, a three-day clear is possible for all four bosses, depending on how it's tuned. It's also possible it's not. Do Bosja, it's way better experience. Yes, but I want the um Can Bosja get me from 515 to 535? I don't think so. I think it's Del Rado or 70 Dungeons. So the plan is to double dip. The plan is to finish the relics so that I have completed relics. So it's about getting both. Do I think anybody will do be done with MSQ within three to seven days? Yes. First of all, there will be skippers, people that are trying to prep for Savage. Um there will be skippers, and so they'll be done in, like, one or two days. Um, and then they'll be standing around with nobody else to do things with, because nobody else will be level 90. Um, and they'll be... And, like, the, it was like this in Shadowbringers, and people were like, What? There's nobody to run the trials with. Nobody wants to run the trials. Ugh. Yeah, we're all still in story. Um, second of all, uh, people who do story, there will be people that play 10 or 15 hours a day. Uh, and the story will likely be... 40 to 60 hours long, and so they'll finish in four days just through raw playtime. You know? 
so. I've just never, so this is, I've never finished a relic. Ever. Never happened. Um, until this relic. This 535 relic, that's my first ever completed relic. I wanted to complete all four tank relics. And this close to the expansion, it it's hard to find the time to do that. And so what I'm instead thinking is, well, I could just level my Reaper and Sage, right? And get really familiar with their level 70 rotations. And I should have an easy time doing that um, and getting while I'm finishing the Relic. So I'm double dipping. As soon as I finish doing that, they'll probably go into Vajja. Or, or, I mean, they'll probably go into Zadnor. So the, those that many dungeons across three Relics, that probably only gets them to like... 74, 75 each. So the last five levels will probably be some combination of roulette, roulettes and um, some combination of roulettes and Zadnor. Maybe just Zadnor. So. Um, yeah, it's not about the item level. It's about completing it. It's, it's possible by the time I get all four tank relics that all four tanks are already level 90. So it is possible by the time I'm working on my last tank relic, it's just cosmetic. And for completion's sake, for the achievement. It's just be, it's just to say that I have. It's not it's not providing value. So, like at this point, anything above 500 at this point doesn't matter. Anything above 500 right here does not matter. Theoretical max is 530 with a 535 weapon. That's where my warrior's at. I have all 530 gear with a 535 weapon. Totally possible. Um, all of that falls away. When we get level 90 gear, none of that will matter. Armor Girl, thank you so much for taking care of Karamoos and Grace. Uh, the Arrow Relic, can that thing be bought for Poetics? Um, so Geralt only sells you completed relics that you've already done, right? So no, you cannot buy a completed ARR Relic. The completed ARR Relic, the final step has to be earned. Now, once you've gotten it once, you can... Narratively, once they've learned to craft one, they've learned to craft replicas just for you. So once you've gotten it once, very similar to the Calamity Salvager, if you completed your relic back in ARR, and in Heaven's Word you realize there was another relic, and so you deleted your ARR one for the inventory space, and now these days you're like, oh, I kind of wish I had my ARR one back, you can go back and get it. But only once you've done it once. You do have to earn it. And the way it's checking is it's seeing if you have the achievement. You'll get an achievement for it. So you can tell whether or not somebody could purchase theirs from if they have the achievement. So what's the thing on the Poetics vendor? Um, you can buy the starting steps with Poetics for a couple of them, right? Like, I know that's how the current one works. The current one is literally a... So this relic right here... This relic right here, um, this one, this one, this one, this one, all these 485 relics I have are just a thousand poetics. Now to upgrade them will make them look cooler. They'll glow. They'll glow. So the 485 version does not glow. So There it is, 485, just Poetics. It's a thousand Poetics and you can just have it. This will glow if I upgrade it all the way. So it's just different. Um, Ruby Tide Earrings of Fending. Fending, Fending, Fending. Decent. Beautiful. And now, I can roll on that. Got to catch it all. Um, trying to descent everything. There's a achievement for descending ten thousand items. Uh, desynthesis. Ten thousand items, and I am slowly chipping away at it. I have decent 7,300 items. Oh crap. Oh crap. I have made a mistake. I clipped that chest. 
No. Outrun it. Outrun it. Ah! God. That was dumb. Okay. And I couldn't do DPS that time. I lost so much uptime. Alright. Now we uh, now we want to be an old lady. So yeah, the, the relics are uniquely locked behind time. The ultimates are uniquely beh locked behind playing well. Um, and so the two shiniest, coolest looking weapons in the game... Um, there's some cool looking weapons behind extremes and crafting and... Uh, you know, dungeons and things like that, story. But the, the absolute pinnacle of weapon design, in theory, for a lot of people, comes down to the relic and the ultimate. And the ultimate weapons are a question of, can you put in the time to play really well to complete a 10 to 18 minute fight, or whatever it is. It's eternally long, don't touch it, don't touch it. Can you do it? Um, and it's literally just a question of will. Now, the other side of things is can you uh, put in the time for a relic? Which is can you do a set of tasks on repeat until your fingers bleed? And if so, we'll give you a shiny relic. They are both literally just a question of stamina. Uh, of slaying. We're looking for the slaying one. All right. Got you slaying one right here. What classifies as desynthable? Um, most most things in the game are desynthable. Basically, anything that you can't buy off the Calamity Salvager is desynthable. Almost all of it. So. So what's the thing on the Poetics vendor? Um, like, just, just the weapons that you can buy there? There's just upgraded weapons there. So, there are weapons available. Just not completed relics. This weapon right here is Poetics. This augmented Shire Bow. Those are upgraded Tome Stones. So, Tome Stones, you can buy every slot with Tome Stones. Um, during an expansion, the ring is unique equipped. After an expansion, it's not. Um, and once you buy Tomestone gear, you can upgrade it through a system called Augmenting. And at the end of an expansion, once you get into the half patch of the next expansion, they make a Poetic set available, which is the final version. It's the final Tomestone gear of that expan the previous expansions um, in its maximum upgraded state. So the Augmented Shire gear was the best gear available through the Tomestone system in Heavensward. And so now, all the way through Stormblood, my characters will wear basically near best in slot gear from Heavensward, and all the way through Shadowbringers, I'll wear best in slot, near best in slot Stormblood gear. Um, because it's good enough. Is there better along the way? Absolutely. But it's good enough, and you can get it with Poetics. It's a nice, clean, matching set that you just get with Poetics. Very easy. Am I doing this just a decent? Uh, for leveling. We're doing this for leveling. So there's three of us in here that need the experience. And so... Two of us are 64, which is why we can't go on to Bardom's. I hit 65, so I could go on to Bardom's, but, like, just barely. I was 64 when I started this mess. So, technically, if we were going to keep going, we'd go to Bardom's next. Um, and we'd all be 65. So, this is a pre-made. 66! So, that's my fifth level for the day. My goal is five levels a day, every day between now and the expansion. We'll see. We'll see if I can maintain that. You're trying to max most classes. Yes, so what I'm doing is I'm with a group. Um, most of which is in chat. Um, I'm with a group, and we're literally just running the highest level dungeon that we can over and over and over. Uh, I just ask that people join that are above level 60. I just didn't want to keep running um, Heaven's Word content, because I've already run 9 million of them. And so we're just running a Stormblood dungeon over and over. So we're running each dungeon like two to four times. So. Hopefully tomorrow, 
I can do the next dungeon, Barnabas. Um, and in addition to that, I'm doing all my relapse every day, so that builds a fair bit of variety. And all right. Got them all. Look at us. Diamond, thank you so much. How are you guys doing today? Um, you were wondering if you just got back into 14, is there things you should be doing each day or week other than roulettes? It's not really a re uh, retention-based game. So there are things locked behind daily resets and weekly resets. Um, you don't have to do any of them. Any of them, at any point. So like, if you want to be progressing through Savage then you want the gear you get from the previous savages. And so if you want to progress through, so the next the next raid is going to be called Pandemonium. And so if you are with a group that's trying to progress through Pandemonium and you're struggling your way through Pandemonium 3, um, P3S will be the abbreviation. But if you're trying to get through the third Pandemonium fight, we don't know the name of it yet, um, each week you'll want to run the first and the second Pandemonium again because you'll be eligible for loot once per week from Pandemonium, all the Pandemoniums. So you're going to want the gear from Pandemonium 1 and 2 to help make 3 a little bit easier. After you beat 3, you're going to want Pandemonium 1 through 3 so that you can get to Pandemonium 4. Now there will be people who beat 4 without any of that gear. They'll just have one piece drop for the whole raid from each of them and they'll clear it for World First Race. But for most people, by week 4, that everybody will have gone and run it enough times that they've all gotten their loot. And so, if you have goals, right, if you want to get a Beast Tribe mount, you're going to want to do the Beast Tribes each and every day for two weeks. So that you give your Beast Tribe mount the minimum amount of time possible. So there are optional things you can do in this game. Nothing in this game is required. If you want to be a top-end raider and you don't like doing daily quests, then don't do them. You just don't. It won't hold you back. The only thing a top-end raider will want that will require that they run content is that each week... You will want to cap your tomes. You'll be eligible for 450 per week, which is basically running like one dungeon a day for five days. So all the days that you, maybe if you raid two nights a week, you just run one dungeon on the days you don't raid. All right, so I'm going to hop into Deliberum. Um, if you guys want to join me for Deliberum, that's fine. If not, no big deal. So we'll have to be on an 80 for that. Yeah, so it's it's not a game that's really retention-based. Um, it's just not. There are games that are. Um, but it's just not... It's not... It's not one of those games. Now, if you want to try to complete everything in the game, you're going to have a set of daily and weekly tasks that feel very, very helpful. Because, like... Doing your first leveling dungeon of each day is an enormous amount of experience. An enormous amount of experience. So, if you want to cap all your jobs in the smallest number of hours, and you're okay with it taking a huge number of days, running your leveling roulette each day, running your frontlines roulette each day, is a very effective way of considering doing that. Yeah, we're still filming it too. Ah, uh, I didn't realize what time it was. We probably wouldn't finish. All right. I'm actually going to bail. Um, yeah, I don't think we have time for deliver. You're right. Thank you, Brian. If we'd finished like 20 minutes earlier, if, we, if, we, if we'd done one less run, I would have time for deliver. I need to do deliver every day, so maybe I'll do it after I film. Um... Yeah, the, the fastest groups with full full Valors and stuff, they're doing them sub-15, but yeah. MSQ gives you a ton of experience, um, just not for, it's just not, it's not fast, but it's effortless. So you can like literally eat a sandwich while doing MSQ Roulette. Praetorium gives more than Castrum, Praetorium takes longer than Castrum. I prefer Praetorium because Praetorium is less effort more experience, and I don't care about the fact that it takes more time. Maybe eight million. 
Yay. All right. Cool. No, 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 no. We'll film. Brian, I'm ready when you are. We can film now. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to clean up my inventory. Um, Because I've got 20 minutes. Not enough time to do anything. So I'm going to list some of this stuff. Uh, all right. Hopefully we're making headway on cleaning this out. Meat is always trash. Almost always. It's worth checking, but... if I misread so hopefully I can get this topped off hermit crab normal okay get these all topped off before I before we film is that 1998 these dies came out of dungeon drops, which is really nice. Uh, last one. Let's see if this bronze ticket thing is worth anything. <gasps> is that real? No. 275, though. Wow. That's unreasonably expensive. That would be huge if that sold. That's awesome. Uh, high quality going for 249. And then I don't actually feel like decenting all that if Brian's ready. Yeah, if Brian's ready, I'm actually gonna probably end up turning all that into a grand company. Um, is that really it? And then I doubt these sell for more than 500. Sometimes they do. Um, the reason they would sell for more than 500 is because what happens is people want to buy them for turning into Domain Enclave and they'll split the difference with you. So it does happen. It's rare. Okay, and logs might be sold by, yeah, it's me. So now we're undercutting me, which is exactly what I was trying to avoid earlier. There we go. Cool. Will coffee biscuits still give same amount of gill? Uh, yes, same amount of gill. You'll still be able to make high quality coffee biscuits. They have not historically nerfed leaf gill. However, Yoshi P has said that with, he does not believe that we're gonna be making coffee biscuits next expansion is what he said. So I believe that to mean that there will be a better one available. All right. Um, let me pull the call up. 